congratulations on your recent graduation, Ms. Daiba. Thanks. I'm so glad it's finally over. Only took me six freaking years. <laughs> oh, you must be an engineering student. Or bio. Chemistry, something in the science. Uh, I see. No, I was a music major, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. Um, most people that are in college for six years are usually lawyers or doctors. Something <laughs> <laughs> useful? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have a minor in theater, too. Well, that way explains it. So, Amanda, a BA in music, what do you plan to do with that? I, have, I haven't the slightest, but I, I was thinking I might like to be an actress. I mean, I really love doing it, and I've been told by my teachers that I'm kind of a natural, so I know I could be an actress. Mm -hmm. um, well, I see you have some student debt here. Yeah. So first things first, you're going to need to pay this off as soon as possible so you don't accrue more interest. So you need to get a job. Well, that's why I'm here. What do you recommend? Well, I've calculated it, and it looks like you'll need 500 a month for your debt, plus 300 for food and personal expenses. You're living in LA, so you'll need at least 800 for that, 100 for utilities, 50 for a phone, 100 for gas. And while we're on the matter of your car, insurance is about 2000 to 2500 a year, so with LA being notoriously accident prone, you're going to need to set aside 200 a month for that. Your parents' health insurance is expiring in two years, so you need to get started on the plan. And never too early to start saving for retirement either. So we'll set aside 5000 toward emergencies, and according to my calculations, you will be debt free in 6.8 years if you stick to my plan. Um, well, I was sort of hoping to go backpack through Europe after graduation. You know, trace my family history, explore the world. And I, I sort of made this promise to myself that I would go somewhere new every year, for at least a couple of weeks, so I can really experience it. And um, I love acting, and I love doing music, so I want to keep my mornings and my weekends open so I can go to auditions and play gigs. Are there any jobs I can get that might allow me to do that and still pay off my debt? With a BA in music business? Yeah. And a completely flexible schedule that will allow you to take off to other countries four weeks at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered selling drugs? Okay, <laughs> 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 hey, right? No, it's really the only thing that would fit your wants. Or you could prostitute or marry a rich woman. Okay, I think I'm <laughs> Look, Amanda, the reality is you're not going to be able to do all those things, not with your student debt anyway. I'll be 30 years old by then. I can't wait that long. I need to do this now. I mean, no actress gets a job after she's 30. No one wants to see a 30-year-old checking into a hostel. I need to do this now while I'm young. I'm, for God's sake, I already have a gray hair on my head. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to give up on some of those dreams. You can't have everything.
everything that I want to accomplish. I mean, some people are content to just live. I mean, their goals are simple. But I want so much more than simple. Is it that they're happy with those simple things? Or that they've grown complacent? I don't want to grow complacent. I want adventure. I want to I want to go out and eat fire. I want to stare God in the face. I want to ride a roller coaster of baby unicorns through the Milky Way. I want to chase down the sun. I don't want to sit in some classroom or some office for the rest of my life. <clears throat> this isn't how man was meant to live. I mean, I want to break free. I want to run as fast as my feet will let me, like a wild dog. I would feel the cold, damp earth under my feet, the wind through my fur, the heat of my blood pulsing through my body, the burn of my skin like the burn in my soul. I want to run so fast that the darkness would never catch me. But I'm slowed down by this jungle in my head. Every thought, every worry, it's like this thick, fibrous vine that grows on the forest floor, crisscrossing and making this tangled web, latching onto each other, sprouting off each other, so densely grown that no hopes or dreams can survive. I want claws so I can slash through the shrubbery. I want to be sharp and fierce and fearless, and I would never be afraid. I want to run so fast that my paws don't even touch the ground. I would grow wings, and I would pounce off the earth, and a wind would catch me and lift me up above the jungle below, and I would soar above the trees and the clear open sky, leaving behind all this tumult below. I would just float with the grace to ease. And up above the trees, I, I see an endless horizon, undaunted by any obstacles. I would let my spirit soar. This is how man was meant to live. Unbound by all these expectations of the world, I need to get back to the basics. Alone, untouched, 
A whole wide world of possibility awaits me. There is nothing to hold me back now. Here, the wind blows uninhibited, and life is as it was meant to be. Simple. And now, to complete my transformation, I shall shed the last remnants of my human life. <coughs> <laughs> Goodbye, cruel garments. May your vain cloth shackles inhibit me no more. <laughs> yes, yes. I bless the rains down in Africa. I bless the rains. Gonna take some time to do the things we never had. Gonna take some time. society you come from. We all had dreams, too. But sometimes, dreams go astray. And so, unhappy, like you, we have gathered here and have learned to live in a state of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> <laughs> what is cognitive dissonance? If reality is not cohesive with your expectations, then simply change your expectations in order to achieve inner peace. It's quite simple, really. Anyone can do it. Let me demonstrate. You see that banana in that tree over there? Yeah. I'm quite hungry. I think I'll eat that banana. But watch. It is too high. And now I'm sad. <laughs> so, instead, I tell myself, bananas aren't that great. It was probably not ripe anyway, and I fear they cause cancer, too. And besides all that peeling and those stringy bits that get into your fingernails, I'm quite happy I didn't get that banana. In the land of cognitive dissonance. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> I was once a med student. I devoted my life to curing cancer before mom passed away. Then, one day after finals, I found a lung. It turned out that I had cancer. That's when I realized that everyone dies. I had been trying to fight something I couldn't fight. How can I keep my patience hope for life when the reality is we all die? 
His voice was rich and smooth like Woody. <laughs> he was so smart and well spoken, I couldn't help him get swept off my feet. He was so in love and so sure he loved me too. He cared about me. He used to tell me how he envisioned our future together. Things were gonna be different this time. And I believe, four years I believe, but things didn't change. And then I realized he didn't love me. He was using me. He never loved me at all. I thought Obama was the change we couldn't believe in. <laughs> when it is ultimately inconsequential, there will always be discontent. In the land of cognitive dissonance. I've felt in my life is clean enough crap. I believe that I can make a difference. I went to work every day and encountered the same problems over and over. Drugs, rape, murder. It was a never-ending battle. Then I realized no matter how hard I worked, there would always be violence. Why should I expect anything less? I don't understand. Why doesn't it matter? Why is it inconsequential? And how can you just give up on the world's problems? Amanda, my ancestors have long searched the sky for these answers. My father, the chieftain, and his father before him, and his father before him. We looked to the stars, longing to be with them. You see, we are all born of the same cosmic dust as the stars. The sun you see in the sky, he who announces the morn, and the moon who calls the night to her bosom, and the planets and their heavenly dances. We are but their children, comprised of, comprised of their gases and various periodic elements. But the sun is expected to grow into a red giant so large that it will encompass the Earth's orbit and swallow us all. And then the universe will be up as it was before. For all of humanity's accomplishments and for all the uniqueness and beauty in our world, in the end, there will be nothingness. Remembered by no one. Affecting no one. <laughs> so you see, life has no meaning. We are but cosmic dust waiting to be reunited with cosmic dust. But that's awful. That is life. This is a place of that we call Bring on the great 
truthiness. Hello? things greater than yourself, to have only simple ones, to not worry about jobs and bills and rent, to never trouble your head with right and wrong and just, to never, you have no insatiable thirst for knowledge, no yearn to quench your curiosity, I mean, to never ponder your own existence and the inevitability that you will one day die and turn to dust, and everything that has been and never will be will eventually cease. To you, time has no meaning, and therefore no urgency. <sighs> to live freely, thinking there's unlimited time. To think that the horizon extends no farther than your own eyes. <sighs> Alas, this is the curse of man. But you know the God. You who are loyal and steadfast, blind to failure and sin, completely accepting. Who finds pleasure in gently wafting breezes, and the, the wind under his fur, or the grass beneath his feet, whose thoughts are pure and unsullied by hypocrisy and self doubt, unbound by expectations of family and society and God and yourself, you are completely free. Oh, how I long for your existence! Oh, God, that is that disgusting! Ay oh! Can the dog take a crap in peace? Yes, you. Have you never seen a dog crap before? No, I mean, yes, but you're talking to me. You must be my scary guy! What the fuck are you talking about? I'm a dog. <laughs> yeah, but. Dog? Yeah, I talk. <laughs> I've always wanted to talk to animals. Tell me, what is it like? Is it as wonderful as I think? Oh. <laughs> I remember you! You were that one running around trying to be a dog. Boy, did you look stupid. <laughs> How'd that turn out for you? Well, if you must know, not so well. I uh, burned my clothes and got caught in the rain, and then when I was trying to find something to eat, I almost got killed. Why don't you take my advice and go home? This isn't where you belong. Listen, pal, I don't need some stupid mutt giving me life lessons, okay? What would you know about being a human? It's hard. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? No, I suppose I wouldn't. Damn right. After all, I'm only a dog. For me, life is so easy. <laughs> Always hunting and finding clean shelter and clean water. Always on the brink of starvation. Always looking over my shoulder for predators, trying to eat and not get eaten. Yes, this is the most enviable life. Well, I guess I never thought of it like that. But, but that doesn't change the fact that I still feel trapped and hopeless. I mean, I was taught that I could do whatever I set my mind to. And I've set my mind to it. But nobody ever wants to tell you that sometimes it might not work. Sometimes dreams just don't come true. Because believing isn't enough. I mean, you can make a decision, but that doesn't mean it's gonna happen. Well, it seems to me you have two choices then. You can either stay here, or you can go home and do something with your life. Look, I've learned something during my time out here. You wouldn't get it, okay? What wouldn't I get? Everything. It's meaningless. Nothing matters, none of this matters. We even if I were to go home and somehow achieve these dreams, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change the world or stop our impending demise. I mean, we are cosmic stardust, waiting to be reunited with cosmic stardust. I, I, I thought for two seconds that maybe I could do something right with my life. God, just forget it, okay? <laughs> now you listen here, Amanda Rose. Dachshunds. You've got the makings of greatness in you. <laughs> but you gotta take the helm and chart your own course. Stick to it, no matter the squalls. And when the time comes, you'll get to test the cut of your sails and show what you're made.
tomato. And well, I hope I'm there, catching some of the light coming up you in that day. I just, I just feel like no matter what I decide, it will never be enough. Am I selfish? No, just human. I guess growing up is learning to dream a little smaller. Well, staying undecided isn't going to help you make a decision. Inaction is still action. What do you really want? To be happy. Are you happy? No. I'm not happy at all. What will make you happy? Knowing that I tried. And why haven't you tried? Because I'm scared, okay? Of what? Of, of failing! Of not trying hard enough, of waking up one day and realizing that I've wasted my life. Well, that's a silly thing to be scared of. What's the point in never trying if nothing is changing? And if it isn't going to matter, what's there to be scared of? You said it yourself. It's only because wishing and dreaming in of themselves is not enough. You've got to do something to put it into action. So do something. You can do this. You just need to stop whining about it and start doing it. <laughs> I mean, what if I put in all this time and energy and it only proves that I'm no good at this? At least you'll know. And then you can choose to move on. Amanda, don't you know? Yes, there are two roads you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on.
I can come with you? Sure. You're my spirit guide, aren't you? Uh, but you have to live by human standards. Uh, trips to the bed, baths, peeing outside. <laughs> All night. But no dressing me up in any stupid costumes. And <laughs> I get to go around something dead and stanky list at least once a month. <laughs> Good deal. Good boy. <laughs>